in this video what I'm going to do is introduce you to two new things one is we're going to be using some libraries um, in particular we're going to be using the random library which is a group of programs pre-written for you that you can then call on little elements of and then also um, a thing called TK inter which is um, begins to allow a graphic user interface for your um, program. Python was written really to be a calculating and a storage and a workhorse program. It wasn't really designed to um, be uh, clear and easy for communication. Um, it was developed before Windows, so the idea of graphic user interface was uh, unknown. So uh, this TK Inter adds a little basic um, graphic user interface functionality. So I'm in REPL.IT, I can use that, I can use Portable Python. What I can't use now is I can't use, um, I can't use the other online uh, interfaces. I've tried a few and they don't have access to the TK interlibrary. REPL.IT does, but instead of calling for a Python program, I've got to call for a TK into program you should find that if it's not at your favorites it should come under your any languages list so i'm going to choose tk inter i'll keep that name i'm happy with that because i'm just uh, having a little play so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a couple of lines and then i'll uh, pause it and talk you through those and then i'll add a few more lines and talk you through those so my first two lines are to import two libraries of programs. Um, the first library, tkinter, uh, is, as I say, the library which uh, contains a whole bundle of small programs um, to allow for a graphic user interface. It allows for windows to be made, buttons, text boxes, uh, for that data from a text box to be collected, for them to be, um, for um, color, different colors, um, values to be passed in and out of this graphic interface. And with import asterisk, what you're doing is you're importing everything. I'd like to import everything. We then have import random. Now random again is a series, uh, a library of programs all based on how to use random numbers. Random is a really difficult thing for a computer to be able to do. Uh, to, for me to ask you to come up with a random number, you have to come up with a number um, of your own choice. Now, a computer can't choose anything for itself. So what it wants to do is, uh, it, some, some do um, pseudo-random numbers. Uh, Visual Basic, for instance, when you call random, actually uses pseudo-random, which, which looks like it's a big number, so it's a random number, um, but actually, when you run it over and over and over, what you find is it's doing just a sequence of calculations just to come up to, with a with an unusual number. And you have to include other things to, to get the randomized, proper randomized. So here in Python, random will help us with a whole load of aspects of making random numbers. So I'm going to pause this. I'm going to add four more windows to make... Um, the uh, outline window. And just to note, notice um, import, obviously lowercase, tk inter all lowercase, random lowercase, and import, yes. Okay, I'll pause this, add four more lines. Okay, so what's happened here is we have made a new variable called window, and I'm putting um, tk from the tk inter library. Uh, as a value into window. Notice the T, confusingly, has a capital. Um, and this is a function. So it's got um, values in, in brackets. It, it expects values to be going inside brackets. So I then fill two values within the variable window. We have a title and we have geometry. So the title, obviously, is going to be the title at the top of the window. Uh, notice it's in double quotes because it's a string. It's something that you you will see as a human, but the computer doesn't care what you write in there. It's uh, it's it just puts in whatever you put into those quotes. Geometry I find interesting, uh, although it's a number value. 
in fact, what's happening is it's going in its parameter in uh, brackets within single quotes. So it's actually not treating it just as a as a numeric value. It's it's reading this as a sequence and then breaking it down. And what I find interesting is that we these days use an asterisk for times on a computer. But here we're saying it will be 350 by 200 as its um, size, but with an X, a traditional X. And then I've called and I've said, right, do the main loop. And what it will do is it will loop round. And unlike standard Python, which runs from top to bottom, with this, it's event driven. So what's going to happen is it will run and then it will just hold running until something else happens. So I will just show you and I would do this now. I would just run it now. I tried without the main loop, but it needs this main loop. Otherwise, it, it, it says it's not got enough there. So I'll just run that. OK, there we go. You can see my title. Um, it's got the, the traditional uh, boxes. So that's all that the library has done. It's made the geometry of this uh, window. It knows how to treat and talk to the title. It knows to put the buttons there. That's something I would have to code individually if I didn't use the library. OK, I'm going to pause this and I'm going to add a few more lines and come back to you. So you'll note that I've added just these two lines. What these two lines are doing is they are going to make a label. A label, uh, if you when you do um, Visual Basic or any programming with um, uh, text boxes with a graphic user interface, a label you'll realise you're allowed to it's showing things, but it doesn't let you actually the user input anything. It is simply as we would say a label on something. Notice the syntax here. So I've given a variable called name label. It's going to be where the uh, asking for the name. Notice, confusingly, label is a uh, here is a function of the library TK Inter. It's a little program. Notice it has a capital L. And the parameters you're passing into those brackets are well which 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 uh, window will it show on the one i've called window confusingly and what should the text be on that label notice that's in quotes and then i'm just double checking to make sure yes so this is a lowercase so where on the grid this is one way of working the geometry <clears throat> within a, a window uh, within the graphic user interface and that's using the grid and what this means is that across uh, so down uh, ugh, across would be the columns and down would be the rows you say which position in that sequence in that ge geometry of the window you would like the label to put appear in and as we know with computers they like starting counting at zero the first number in a computer is zero so start at zero uh, row and column, uh, column zero, row zero. So it will be in the top left corner. So if I run that um, now, okay. And here we go. What is your name? Showing that text in this window, in this um, which I've variable called window um, and I've defined where the label should be. What you could do, what would be good, is if you played with its positioning. So I've moved that to one. Um, I have moved that but I'm not quite sure what's happened. So I would have a little play with that, see what see what um, comes of that. OK, I'm going to add a few more lines and I'll uh, come back to you. Uh, so what I've done here, you'll see I've added two more lines. 
notes these two more lines here. Uh, this time they're making a text box, or as um, Python likes to call them, entry box. So uh, what I've done is I've made a window using the TK interlibrary. Following that, I've put on a label. I've um, named it name label. I've invoked, if you like, name label. Uh, I've, uh, sorry, label library. I don't know why it's uh, doing quite so much there, but never mind. So it's uh, I've invoked and called the function label. And then here I've called the function called entry. So that's making a text box. That's quite annoying. Uh, that's now making a text box, which is something a user can put information into and it will fall into. It's the equivalent to input in a standard Python program. Um, I'm just going to run it that way. It will be showing and stop flickering. OK, so you can see this text box here. Um, notice that the two functions label and entry have capital letters. Um, this is my variable, so I named it without a capital. So that's why, it, why it's there. Uh, one of the parameters to a text box is how wide do you want to make it? Well, I've said I want to make it 10. And then I've said where I would like to put it, which is in column one. That's the second column across in row one. So that's the second row down. And so that is now down and you can see where one ends, the next begins. OK, uh, so um, I'll just uh, stop this and I'll type the last part of my program in. Uh, I've just realized I've actually got another label I want to put in and I want the text box actually to be on the line above where the uh, what's your name. So I'm just going to just change this and just check. Uh, just stop and then run again. That should actually be on the line above just so it's more obvious. OK, so that matches with the name. Uh, hold on, I'll just type the um, other line. So just to catch you up, um, the name label is in position 00. zero. That's right in the top corner. The text entry box, uh, as it's known as entry uh, to um, TK Inter, is in position uh, one, uh, column one, row two. So it's, a uh, sorry, column one row zero so it's one across it's in the second column and it's in the top row and then the label this is just a wording label it won't do anything except it's going to get filled with a value in a moment and it says get ready for a lovely uh, message and i've put that into column one row one so that's actually the second column across and the second row down because counting starts from zero. Um, so, and that's within the window window. I'm going to pause this and I'm going to now add that last little bit of coding. Hold on. Do you know what? This line is so important. I'm going to stop right now. I've only added one line. I've shifted all these up just so that I've got space to show you. It's all on one page. I've just added this one line. And what we are doing here is we are defining a new function, a new sequence of um, lines of code that will uh, be triggered by one thing. One thing is going to call it and it will do this little loop that I'm about to write. Notice, like so many other things, there is a colon here. So I've defined a new function. I'm calling it clicked. Uh, it's going to have values uh, potentially in brackets. So it's it's got the brackets after it. And here is me saying here's what comes next is me defining it. OK, I'm going to type that in now. Uh, so I was going to add all the lines together, but I've realized each of these lines is really crucial. So I'm going to stop at each one. So here I now have I'm defining what will happen when this function occurs. 
So I've made a new variable. I'm going to call it message choice because uh, it's going to be one of multiple messages that there could be. I'm now invoking one of the library programs from the random series or sequence of programs. And this one it's, that I'm invoking is choice. So it's going to choose something from a selection at random. Now notice what I've got is uh, the content because it's a function is in rounded brackets but the, the um, options within that are in square brackets uh, they're the um, brackets next to P on your keyboard uh, each of the possible choices is in single quotes I've noticed I've got a spelling mistake here uh, so there are three messages at the moment it could have you are great have a nice day or are you listening uh, each one is separated each one is within single quotes and separated by a comma so I'm going to pause now and I'm going to add the next uh, few lines um, to uh, the code and I'll talk you through that right I've added two more lines um, so what I've added is we've We've got a variable called uh, message choice, which I just spoke to you about. That will be filled with one of the random uh, selection from these three messages, which will go into the variable called message choice. Then what's happening is I've made a new variable. I could actually have overwritten that one, but uh, a new variable called message for label. And that will be equal to, that will be made equal to whatever the little message was, plus the name from the, uh, oh, I need to change that, the name from the text box. I renamed the text box. So um, my text box is now called text name. And then, so I've um, collected a random word uh, message out of three. And then what I've done is I've made a new variable called message for label. And that is whatever the random message is, plus the getting the value from the text box, i.e. the name they have typed in. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, change the value I'm going to configure so I'm going to change the value in my friendly label I've set it up at the top here I'm going to change the value to now showing the message for label uh, which is the random message plus the name strung together concatenated together now that's all very well that's going to sit there but nothing can happen nothing is going to trigger this um, function from happening this little sequence from happening until I have an event which will trigger it off set it going so my last two lines that I'm going to add is to define and show a button so what I need to do I'm going to just pause and type those two lines in and I will show you what those say so what you'll now see is the last part of this is that I've added two further lines. I've created a button and I'm running this right now. See here is the button. Uh, it's put into the window, the variable I named window, which is defined here, which we've talked about. It has text of click me. So it's asking you to click me. Uh, and um, it also has an action. Uh, when uh, something, uh, when an event occurs. So the event is uh, when the button is clicked and the action is that it calls clicked uh, function. Here is the instruction, go off and start running the thing called clicked. And that's the one you've just defined above it here which is to find a random name and then a random message and add the name and then show that name, that message. So I'm just going to run that now. <clears throat> and when I press click me, 
have a nice oh of course i didn't type in a name if i type in bob let's make this a little bit bigger you are great bob um are you listening frank okay now because this is in um an online version the rendering of it isn't particularly good. It's something within something within something else. Um, a thing I'm just going to change just to uh, show you um, a last, a couple of things actually. One is these messages jump up right next to the name. So what I'm going to do is my message, I'm, I have three random messages here. I'm actually going to start them with a comma because if I were using their name, I would then put a comma and then a space and then the name. So those are within my single quote. So this message here now consists of comma, you are great. And the next message, comma, have a nice day. And then I've just realized that should be at the end of that line. You are great, comma, have a nice day, comma. So right here now the message reads, you are great, comma, and then it's ready for the name. Have a nice day, comma, and then it's ready for the name. Last thing I'm going to add is um, a little bit of colour. Uh, I'm going to do that to the button. You can do this to each of the um, objects on the window. So BG equals, that's going to be the background colour. And then we need a hash to tell it it's going to be in um, hexadecimal. FF00FF, zero, zero, FF, that's number zero. Comma. I'm going to try running this now. Okay, you see that the color has changed and we can also change the writing color FG foreground. FF, FF, zero, zero, comma. Separate that out with a comma. Let's run that now. Mm, didn't like that. What have I done there? Um, I'm going to pause that there. Um, I'm just going to check this still works with the just one with the background. Something that I've just done has stopped it being happy. Um, I'm going to pause and uh, just see if I can find out. Otherwise, um, I'll just leave a, a little final message. Uh, I've just copied this into a, a new um, program, uh, a new instance of um, TK Inter and um, it's working with the background so i'm going to just stop here for now um, you can have a little experiment what you what i find particularly exciting with this is that you have the possibility here with the colors uh, these three pairs of hexadecimal uh, codes you can now choose uh, one of millions of colors the first two digits talk about the strength of the red the second two, the second two talk about the strength of the green, and the third uh, pair is talking about the blue, red, green, blue. Um, so I will put a link to the um, to a discussion about uh, colours in hexadecimal on my video link. Um, so have a play with that.
and um, what I'd be particularly interested in is if you can come up with a new purpose for this um, program if it can be uh, the random message could be uh, linked to um, some other um, purpose well done